Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This is a cake challenge piece and the Brigadiers voted for the theme Fantasy Forest. This is the mood board that was presented to them in the forum to spark their imagination. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the video to see all the individual amazing pieces and vote for your favourite in the comments below. Firstly, you want a flat board. I love these acrylic circles for working on and I'll leave a link to everything I use in the description box below. You want to place a piece of greaseproof paper over the top. Make sure that you've got the curly side down, otherwise it can make your job a bit more difficult with it getting in the way of curling upwards. I have just made my ganache so it's a little bit runny, but you want to place some in the centre of your paper and smooth the circle out to the same size as your cake. I'm only working with a little 6 inch round as it's just for the tutorial, but you want to make sure that the ganache peeps out from underneath the cake all the way around. Then I'm going to take this ganache up the sides because I don't want it to set on my paper. Otherwise, we're not going to get our scraper around it. Now, this isn't an order. No one's going to be eating it. I baked this a while ago and I'm a little late getting around to decorating it. So I've just popped some ganache in the centre, basically to stick the cakes together. But usually I would fill it with much more soft fillings such as buttercreams and jams. You then want to coat the whole thing in a layer of ganache. I'm taking my Pro Froster and I'm just lowering the top to fit. Then you want to start sweeping around the sides to give them a straight edge and clean up any ganache that might be pulling at the bottom. It's easier at this stage to let this first coat set. You can see as we're adding the second coat, the cake is not wobbly and it's a lot firmer to work with. You just have to be patient. Then you just want to keep adding it and scraping it off until you've got straight sides and a flat top. You can also just run your knife around to take off any little bits that overhang once it's set. And then cutting a little flat part for the bottom so that when we flip the cake over, it's nice and level. I'm just adding some ganache to my board and then you want to flip the cake over, remove the working board and your greaseproof paper. Again, I am rushing a little bit here so the ganache hasn't 100% on the bottom, but it was good enough for this tutorial. <laughs> now you should have two fully flat sides and a nice crisp edge. I'm just going to pull my cake into position on my board and I want a large area at the front. I'm just spraying the front with a little bit of water and brushing it to cover the whole area before dabbing off any large drips. I've rolled out my white sugar paste and I'm just covering the front of the cake. I have many tutorials on this cake top forward style if you want to see me cover the whole thing but as this is just a tutorial, I'm short on time, I'm only going to be decorating the front. I've now got my airbrush and I'm just lightly spraying it with blue. I've then switched it to pink airbrush colour which actually looks purple as I spray it on top of the blue. I'm just going around the outside. I've then put blue back into my airbrush gun and I'm spraying on stripes and slightly thinner ones for tree branches. Feel free to practice on paper first so you get the hang of the thicker and thinner strokes. But it is only the background so don't worry about it too much. I'm then just adding a little bit more blue across the bottom to create a mist effect. Here I've mixed lots of different colours, which is going to be my colour palette for the cake. Dark blues and purples. We have a navy, we have some mixed with purple and black. I've even got a ball of pale blue that I haven't fully mixed together, so it's more of a marble effect. And so for the rest of the video, you're going to have to stare at my ridiculously stained hands and nails, sorry. I'm taking my blue marbled ball and rolling it out just to sit in front of the cake board. The great thing about marble is if you've got two sides to choose from. And I'm going to go with the one underneath because it's got more of a prominent marble effect. I'm just cutting a straight line so I can put it up against my cake and then I'm cutting some wavy lines to create a scene of water. I've then got my very deep blue which I've chosen to use as foliage. So these are for my grasses and leaves. I'm just cutting around the shape of the water and pushing it up until it meets. I've then got my Dresden tool and I'm just tapping in straight lines for a stylized look of grass. Then you want to do the same on the other side. 
As you can tell again, I am not decorating around the whole back, just a bit that you're going to see from the front in a photograph. I've then chosen another colour to use and this one is going to be my rocks in a dark grey colour. I've just cut a chunky random shape and I've stuck it to the right hand side for my rock. Then with the Dresden tool I'm marking in lines to create shapes in my rock. With the larger end of the Dresden tool I'm pushing in a channel where my waterfall will run down. And then I'm filling this with some of that marbled blue, just scoring in lines to give the water a bit of movement. For the splash at the bottom, I'm just taking my scalloped tool and dragging the paste out to create these little jagged edges. And then I'm cutting the bottom flat and attaching it to the base of the waterfall, curling over the water and adding in some ripple lines. I've now grabbed my rock colour again and using a chunky oval with a flat bottom, squashing it into shape with my Dresden tool, creating a ledge for a character to sit on and getting lines on the side so it matches the rock behind it. I'm now just adding some more scenery, rocks here and there, just to add to the forest look. Different colour again now for my tree bark. This is like a very, very deep purple and I'm just squashing on a tapered sausage, pulling the larger end right out with the Dresden tool. This is where a really soft paste comes in handy. You can get some really deep textures in there. I've then got some small tapered sausages, which I'm just adding on as extra branches. You can just merge soft paste easily with a Dresden tool. For the foliage, I've gone back to my deep navy color and I'm just squashing really random shapes for the tree canopies. This is just stuck on with water and I'm using a very large star piping tip. I use these more for texturing than I ever do for piping and I'm just twisting and pulling to create a fluffy leaf effect. I'm then just doing the exact same on the other side but adding a little hole to my tree bark just to give you something else to look at. Here we're just getting the trees to kind of frame the canopy of the forest. More blobs of blue paste, stabbed with our piping tip, make quick little filler bushes. Now I've got some lilac paste and I'm creating a random fantasy creature. I made this up exactly how you're seeing me make it here just adding bits on as I go along. It kind of ended up looking a bit like a lilac rabbit slash Pokemon, but I chose lilac as it's a very similar color to the scheme that we're working with. And we want to create a fantasy mystical look. It's just a very simple creature with a simple body. Shaped little cones for arms and the ears are made by pulling the sharp end of the Dresden tool through a flattened teardrop. This is where it looks a bit like a rabbit, so I'm just pulling the edges of the ears down so there's a bit more like a giant bat look here. I've then placed it on the rock and I'm adding a very long tail. I then decided to texture it into a fluffy tail and once I'd done that, decided his belly would look good to match, so I started pulling in some lines for that. His nose is a dark purple oval and I'm just poking in holes for eyes which I'm then filling with some black balls of sugar paste. I've now got myself a tiny ball tool which I've dipped into some white paint. My white paint is Snowdrift White Powder mixed with a little bit of water and I'm just adding some little magical floating things in the forest and also highlights on the nose and the eyes of the creature. I've then swapped to a paintbrush and I'm just painting its belly and fur on its tail and then I'm switching to a larger brush and tapping in some of that white to the treetops so it looks a bit like moonlight shining on it. I'm adding this anywhere to the tops of rocks where the moonlight might hit it and also a few little reflections in the water. 
Looking back, I probably needed another creature in the water as it does look a little bit empty. Or even maybe some lily pads. But I was pressed for time and I had less time to work on it than originally planned. I've then got my tiny daisy plunger, which I've just cut out some purple flowers and I'm pressing these into the treetops and it's still soft, so they sit right in there. You can create some really interesting cakes by choosing a colour scheme and sticking with it. This would have been so easy to make the bark in brown and the treetops in green, but just switching out some of the colours and actually sticking to a colour palette can give you some cool styles and effects. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please stick around to see all the Brigadier's amazing fantasy forest pieces. Here is the mood board again, so you can see what sort of vibe we were working with. And don't forget to vote for your favourite in the comments below. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.